a lot of Angelina Jordan fans call her a musical genius. And I think it could be a good idea to take a really deep dive into that and find out what that means and ask some people who were expert in their own fields. And so we will be speaking with Bart the Law Professor, Lutka the Musical Scholar, and Adrian the Scientist. And we will be asking each one of those the same two questions. What is your definition of genius? And how would you describe the genius of Angelina Jordan? We physically met Adrian in Norway at yeah. an Angelina Jordan concert, but even before we met him, we had him on the podcast, and he gave us a very thorough and methodical categorization of how he used different Angelina Jordan songs at different moments during his day to help get him through the day and to highlight different moods. And Adrian, as he is not a nuclear physicist, but he's an electronics engineer in particle physics, and he works alongside of nuclear physicists. And so he really is a very high-powered scientist. And the small detail that he noticed is part of his scientific perception. Yeah. So, Adrian, good to see you again. Yeah, hi, Alan. Very nice to see you. And welcome to our podcast. Thank you for inviting me. And we have a very, very interesting subject today. We are talking about genius. And we have three eminent scholars in their respective fields, and we are asking them each the same th two questions. Uh, what is your definition of a genius? And how would you describe the genius of Angelina Jordan? It really, it's very important for me to have given you these questions beforehand because these questions are very rich and complicated and they really do need some preparation. Yeah, that's right. No, they are not uh, simple questions at all. No, for sure, for sure. So first question, how would you define genius, Adrian? So I think that's the easiest one. <laughs> okay, okay. The second is a lot hard. A, a genius is just an exceptional and rare ability of someone that can be either mental ability or physical ability that is outstanding with respect to other people. And so it exceeds really the norm by a lot. I think one can consider a genius anybody who has a special gift, somebody who is incredibly good at, let's say, mathematics, or somebody who can, say, from young, play the violin. So there are just, let's say, abilities that people can have that are exceptional. Do you think a genius can be measured with an IQ test, or do you think that is not an appropriate way of assessing what a genius is? No, no, that is not an appropriate way, no. Because I think somebody can have normal intelligence, but have an exceptional skill. I was talking to someone, and we got to talking about genius, and one of the things that came up in conversation is the difference between someone who is a genius in one field and then someone who is a genius across the board, where their genius is spread out over many areas of their life. It can happen that it is more spread, but there are surely also areas where they are not a genius at all. Yeah, yeah, for sure. In the world of chess, sometimes you get uh, someone who is a genius in chess, but they don't know how to tie their shoes. That's right, yeah. And sometimes it's very specialized. For example, like some languages are completely isolated and have no relation to any other language. And maybe sometimes intelligence is like that. Sometimes you have one area of intelligence which is completely isolated. Yeah, one can see that also with autistic people, that they can have a, a genius ability of something, but for the rest, uh, not. But then, as you say, it can be widespread over many areas. One is never a genius in everything. When you're talking about a genius that is a genius in many areas, I think what Bart mentioned in his interview was Leonardo da Vinci. And I think he must have been a genius in a lot of areas. And he was Absolutely. like, he, He's it, probably the classical example of that. Yeah, yeah. He was like yeah, an artist, a painter, and inventor, and uh, into human anatomy. 
he was really thinking about everything that he was uh, surrounded by. But I think I read somewhere that he was observing the flow of the water ripples in a stream. And uh, this scientist that were looking into his text said that all his observation was really on point and very great. But then he actually did try to think about the processes behind it. And they were not as accurate. They were more like the feelings you had during that time of what was causing things, like it was some kind of outside force pushing on the water, when it's not actually. Mm -hmm. So there were, of course, there were areas that he was not able to comprehend. I think that's a wonderful example, because uh, sometimes you have a poet who is a purveyor of images where they collect and specialize and highlight certain images in a certain way. And when you talk about da Vinci, observing the ripples and describing the ripples in the stream, in a way, that's what Angelina Jordan is doing. She is capturing the ripples in the song that we ordinarily cannot observe. And if da Vinci cannot actually then accurately analyze the nature of the ripples, that doesn't matter. That does not lessen the impact and the effect of what he does and how he can express it. And it's the same thing with Angelina. If we are having a reaction to the ripple she puts into the song, the analysis does not increase no. Our appreciation. Yeah. I remember somebody saying on one of our podcast episodes that I don't know why it, it makes me feel like that, but I don't care. I just enjoy it. And I think that is a lesson that we should all take into our hearts that maybe we don't have to analyze everything, yeah. Yeah. especially in arts. It's just take it in and just enjoy it for what it is and what it does to you. I'm in love and I don't analyze why I'm in love. The brain is really one of the last great mysteries to be solved. Yeah. It's very hard to solve. <laughs> and let me ask you a more difficult question. Tell me about how you would describe the genius of Angelina Jordan. Yeah, so th this is very difficult, yeah. It's her genius, is, it is multiple, let's say, in the sense that she, she has the ability to feel the essence of a song and then work on it somehow internally and then reproduce it in a, in a way that is really hers and bringing out the soul of the song and, and to be really able to communicate that. Do you know what fascinates me, Adrian? Your use of the word somehow, where she works on it somehow. And that one word captures the mystery. That one word captures the aspect of genius of how, somehow. Somehow, but there, there are many other mysteries because her voice, she's able yeah. to, to structure every sound she makes in such a genius way. And it's just unbelievable. It's an ability she has. She goes beyond what normally you could expect of somebody who, who sings. Because she, she goes in, in very great detail and she, she's able to make nuances that are incredibly fine and felt when you hear it. It's an incredible ability. And off the top of your head, can you give a specific example? Um, either one moment in a song of when she does this that would illustrate what you're describing? Yeah. In her performance, Million Miles, she does a, a run, which is quite exceptional. And uh, this is before she does the belt. That run is just something incredible. You cannot understand how somebody can do that. The title of this podcast is Genius Comes in Many Forms. 
and it has different meanings. It means that sometimes we recognize a genius, sometimes we don't, and people can be geniuses in different fields. And also, someone who is a genius can be so fluent in what they do and how they do it that we are in awe of their fluency. Just the way they're operating is a part of their genius. Yeah, that is right. I think also what is genius is not just the individual sounds that uh, Angelina makes, but it's the buildup all through the song. It's, it's fantastic how she constructs it. If you listen, for instance, to The Suspicious Minds, how she sang it at the concert. It was so well constructed, an ending that was, for me, a poetic way whereby she, she stopped the band and she was just singing it by herself. And, mm. and very, very sort of gentle in an amazing way, how she reconstructed and rearranged the song mm. and then executes that, it's just fantastic. I had to take a moment there. Yeah. I got very emotional there. <laughs> that makes a change. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. It's a habit of mine. But uh, No, it's a good habit. Yeah. It's wow. An Ange- it's an Angelina Jordan habit. Yeah. <laughs> I had an Angelina Jordan moment. <laughs> but the follow-up of what he says next is very interesting uh, after that. You are more knowledgeable about this than I am, Adrian. So was there a difference between her uh, official video to her performance in Norway? Uh, yes. The main difference is the how she ends, because her official video is more, let's say she stays more between the lines. She does the whole construction as she wants it. It's done in a way that you would expect from a studio version. Oh. But then the, the live performance, she, she took more liberty. She was going beyond, you know, things. She was a little bit playing with the public as well, <laughs> you know, making it like making a double <laughs> ending. Like <laughs> she, she was kind of finishing the song and, and everybody was <laughs> expecting <laughs> that, that to be the end. <laughs> and people were applauding already, but actually that was not the end. And then she added still a little bit to it. Yeah, a few moments later, and it was yeah. just, it's genius, it's so geniusly done, it's, it's unbelievable. It's wonderful and beautiful, the way her audience adores her, and the way she in turn adores her audience, and maybe that's just her way of saying, Thank you. She loves performing and she loves the way her audience responds to her. It's the most natural thing in the world. Yes. Could clearly see when she said that now she was going to sing her last song and then the whole public went, of course, oh, like, oh no. <laughs> and then she was going, yeah, oh, sorry, you know. And, yeah. uh, and then when people didn't stop applauding, she was going like, oh, you want more? You guys want more? <laughs> and of course, you know. People knew she was going to do a few more songs, but she was just playing with the, with the public at that point. I'm looking forward to how she continues in the next five and 10 and 20 years, how she continues to play with the public. Yeah, yeah. it will now, only get better, I think. Yeah, it, it, will, it will only get better. Adrian, thank you very much. It's been most interesting and most informative. Great, thank you. Uh, this has been such a journey. In a way, This is for people who appreciate the nuances of intellectual discourse. Yes, so we won't have many views. 
<laughs> I mean, it's such a great, uh, great theme and a lot of ideas popping up when you're watching this. Yeah. A lot of ideas. One aspect of genius that we haven't talked about is the fact that sometimes genius and madness go very close together. And that's an interesting aspect of genius. My father was an artist and very creative. He was so productive and always thinking of different ways of seeing the world. And I know he had an episode, this was before I was born in the 50s, where he went crazy. <laughs> it was like uh, uh, we had a, a friend of the family who was a psychiatrist, and he he helped uh, uh, my my mom and and, uh, and my father uh, through this episode. And he explained it with uh, people that are uh, very creative, have creative minds, can sometimes get lost in the creativity and he can't uh, switch off and my father said during this time and he was doing stuff like uh, letting the canary out of his cage he needs to be free and he, he said to my older brothers he said don't walk on the white stripes on the carpet because that means death and afterwards this lasted a couple of weeks i think uh, he said that it was like he was living inside a dream. He had no control of what he was doing. Because sometimes if you have too many electrical appliances on one plug, then you can short circuit and the fuse can blow. Yeah. And so sometimes if you have too much intensity with your intelligence, something short circuits in your brain. We can be honest with our public and we can say we've bit off more than we can chew. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and so we're having to break it up into tiny bite-sized pieces, make it digestible. Yeah. So th thank you so much for this uh, incredible insight. It's such a ride. Yeah, it's, it really is. It's such a ride. Yeah. yeah. And of course, this is like such a privilege for us YouTube creators to get to know these incredible people. That's one of the benefits of listening to Angelina and getting so hooked that you start a YouTube channel and then you yeah. meet all these fantastic, wonderful people. Yeah. It really shows just how, how much creativity and uh, thoughts and reflections and love there is out there. Yeah. Maybe the Angelina Jordan fan base are either more connoisseurs of life or connoisseurs of exquisite emotion. So maybe that is what attracts them to her ability. Yeah. I hear this all the time, that they are praising the angels, that the community is so supportive and nice. She must be doing something right. <laughs> Thank you, Nalan. Thank you for this. Welcome, gentlemen, to our podcast. I think we can call this epilogue, right? And if I were clever, I'm sure I could come up with a Shakespearean quote, when will we five meet again? But <laughs> that would be a bit too much of a stretch. I think it's only Bart that gets that one. <laughs> Usually, as an attorney, I always hear Shakespeare quoted, the first thing we do, let's kill all the lawyers. That's usually <laughs> what I hear. Having heard everyone being interviewed and all the commentary, it's given us a lot of food for thought. And I think this is a good moment for us to talk about the food and to talk about the thoughts. Adrian, why don't you start us off by saying, now that you've heard everyone's interview and everyone's comments, how would you respond now? Would your answer be the same or would your answer be different? How, how do you see the question and the answer now? I would answer the same, but on the other hand, I have learned a lot from other people's analysis, and this gives also a different perspective. I think it only emphasizes that the, the genius of Angelina is not something very simple to define. It's not because she's good at this or she's good at that that makes her a genius. It's a very multifaceted type of ability that we have very great difficulty to define. So... 
I think my definition is just very simple and it's uh, what I imagine is her ability. But uh, surely with the examples that Bart and Ludger have given, it opens up a big spectrum of other things that are going on that I haven't noticed. That's a good answer. So much different spin from each other. And that really came out in the interview. So uh, I was very pleased about that. And look, um, the same question for you. We are very lucky amongst the five of us that your three fields of expertise are so completely different. And now that you've heard Adrian's interview and you've heard Bart's interview, would you have the same response if I were to interview you again? Would you be giving the same answer in terms of your definition of genius and also how you would describe Angelina's genius? I would say from the position of the musician, this would be the same. But of course, this is always just a part of if you want to describe something in real life, you have this part and you can watch on the same thing from another part. Of course, deepens the understanding of from the field of physics. You can have other ideas about acoustic questions mm -hmm. with coming from waves which goes through the universe and goes through your brain. You remember that you have to look with different eyes on the same thing to get a full picture. So this is what I would have to say. Okay. Bart, let us hear your answers. Yeah, I, I think we all came about it from our own careers. And I found if I could have spoken about the music and in some of the insights that Adrian had too, I certainly would have incorporated that. But I don't have that background, and uh, I greatly appreciated their insights. And I found myself really coming to a greater understanding of how Angelina does what she does in a way that uh, it's never going to be a full answer. And you can see the shadows of what she's doing. I think it's so profound what she's doing that I think we all can get insights. My approach to it was obviously from a standpoint of big picture and I think consistent with kind of the way that the law is it, huge and it's interrelated and you have to look at things at, at a big picture and then kind of zoom down and I think if you're a talented musician more than talented Linger, just brilliant you have your own genius and you can share that and you have a greater affinity to the kind of genius that Angelina has and Adrian you're obviously a brilliant guy in your own right, and you're very thoughtful, and you analyze things very well. So I just got such a kick out of it. And of course, <laughs> Alan has his own magic, so we won't compliment him anymore. And Pontus was participating. I just enjoyed the whole thing, and I just feel so great about our connection here, and I'm looking forward to going forward. But yeah, I wouldn't have changed anything because I brought a different perspective from my background, and I think we all brought that to the table. Yeah. The thing I really like about Adrian's analysis and his focus is I can really see why he's a scientist, because he puts things under a microscope and he takes a deep dive and he sees details and he describes details that would never occur to me. And this for me is a scientific mind. And I really admire that. Very unusual. A lot of people who are scientists probably don't even display that. They don't have that for public consumption. But with Adrian, I really admire that when he talks about something because he sees little, little details that I would never ever see. It's not that all those details are very important, maybe, but it's just something that... <laughs> uh, yeah, no, really. It's, uh, there, there are probably many details that, that are unimportant. That is a response from a humble person. To, to that, I would say, you don't know that they are unimportant until you notice them. Exactly, yeah, yeah. There are details that are important, and there are details that are unimportant, couldn't have been sang differently or used different intonation and it wouldn't have changed the overall picture but there are others that are very important yeah and i think this is also part of the genius of angelina jordan because she instinctively uh, distinguishes the important details in her choices versus the unimportant details and she may not be a scientist like you are but she makes that distinction spontaneously while she sings to highlight the important details. 
Pontus, is it fair for me to ask you the same question? Now that you've seen all of the interviews, does your concept of genius and the genius of Angelina, has it shifted at all? I think it has. I think one of the biggest revelations listening to that uh, or seeing that interview with the three of you gentlemen uh, was the notion of uh, three different fields coming together and painting a picture that is more complete than I could have come up with myself. So I think what you said there, Alan, with connecting the dots is a good picture of how we can think about things. And I think that's also true in everyday life when we try to come up with new ideas, for instance, that we can take from different fields of knowledge and by combining them make something new out of it. I think that's one of the most interesting things I think came up with doing this. And I want to congratulate you, Alan, for coming up with the concept of contacting and reaching out to Ludger and to Adrian and to Bart to do this, because it's really interesting to find out more about how other people see the artistry of Angelina Jordan in a way that I cannot. And also to see the similarities, of course. If I had to pick one favorite to go back to and listen to again, it would be what you did, Ludger. And that was brilliant to, to have that kind of insight into a musician's mind. And I'm uh, jealous of your abilities because all my life I really wanted to be able to play an instrument or become better at the musicality of things. I think there's so much to, to gain uh, by that. So I have just decided to pick up singing lessons. And I don't sing at all, but I'm going to reach out to uh, one of the featured vocal coaches and try to do something about that because I, I get inspired. It's so inspirational to do this. Pontus, I want to book you in 12 months time for you to sing the repertoire of Angelina. No, no problem. <laughs> you can sing it either in English or Swedish, whichever is easier for you. Look, at your skill is an international inspiration. Yes, we can make a concert. Uh, do you sing at all? Yes, I had lessons in singing like five years maybe. This, this always helps. At least singers say to me it helps. They feel that as a pianist, sing with like them together a bit, little bit at least and can better follow maybe. And they notice uh, and they ask, are you singing too? If as a moderator, I'm allowed to answer my own question, what I have gotten out of the three interviews is a greater focus on the S word, which is subjectivity. Because you three, well, the four of you, with Pontus describing the nature of genius, it is so subjective. But um, it's subjective in the best sense of the word because it's very, very rich. And it's almost like the four of us are watching a spectacular sunset. Now, let me hear each of you describe the sunset that we've just seen. It's very personal. We have the words in the language for the color, but... How do you begin to describe something you've experienced like a sunset? And this is almost like the art of Angelina Jordan. It hits us in a certain way, and it's about the feels. Subjectivity often is used almost as a dirty word. In terms of art, it really should be elevated and should be valued quite a lot in terms of the subjectivity of how Angelina Jordan is forging her art in this wonderful inner furnace that she has, but also the subjectivity of how we are reacting to it. And this is what has happened in this podcast. We have reacted subjectively to how we understand the nature of the word genius and Angelina's genius. Yeah, yeah we have been doing this in a very sort of analytical way so far. So we have not gone so much into what do we feel when she sings this or that. It's more that we have defined like this is very unique or very clever as the way of singing. But we have not covered yet the part of what does it do emotionally to us. 
We could do another podcast about that. Uh, why don't we do an introduction to that podcast right now? And I say to you, Adrian, right, so tell us subjectively how you feel. Well, it depends on each song. So I think the way the emotions are communicated are unique. And it really goes very deep, at least into me. Just the way she creates a sound, she does the timing, she emphasizes different parts of the song and the whole build-up, like also Pontus said there. She works on this build-up that you feel from the start of the song and this causes you to feel either happy that most of the time. It makes me feel happy and it's really very beautiful and so it makes me feel good. But then there are also songs that have a sort of sadness to it and then make you feel sad, maybe make you cry. And I think her genius is also there to be able to transmit that feeling, create that feeling inside you. And do you have that too, Pontus or Bart? Or... Yeah, you pretty much took the words right out of my mouth when you're talking about feelings, because I think our focus in the last interviews was more kind of analytical, as you said. And for me, the most important thing when I'm listening to Angelina is I've arrived in a place of knowing. She speaks to me in a way that no matter whether it's sad or joyous or just heart-wrenchingly painful, what she's seen, I know at the bottom of it, there's just something there. It transcends everything else. And Alan likes to talk about joy and spirituality infused in what she's communicating. And I, th I never feel she's out of control in, in the sense of her spirituality and the, sense, the joyousness that comes when she sings I always feel good no matter if I'm crying I'm feeling good whereas with other singers I haven't had that experience and it's almost universal when she sings something it's almost like I've gotten conditioned to her voice in some way no matter how different the genre that she's in or what she's singing there's kind of like coming home I guess that's why she's my favorite artist by far is because it feels like it's just, like, it's the way it should be. When I first talked about her, you know, I talked about the truth of the song, but really I think it's the truth of our human condition. Yeah. And it pervades everything she does. And the fact that she was able to do it at such an early age really captured my attention. And it's just grown from there. Every time she does something, I think she builds on what she's done before. So she becomes better and she'll continue to be. That's what I'm hoping. And God willing, that's what will happen. Look, would you be happy to describe how Angelina Jordan makes you feel from the inside? Do you have access to these words to describe? I would connect to that what Bart said about connection of beauty and truth. So, as I said in this, all I asked, there's this one word, don't. So, of course, she says, maybe we stay friends. But, of course, what she wants to say in the song is don't. Don't go away. So the truth of this feeling is in the empathy, which you understand in a very deep way, more than if I listen to other singers. Of course, why this is, it's difficult to explain. All you have every time, words and music, and this is a combination with music, and words which goes obviously to a very deep level of, of your consciousness. So you find a connection. And uh, what you want, of course, in your life is a connection. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think that's a key word right there, the connection. I felt that strongly the first time I listened to her, uh, that kind of connection, because I was going through uh, a whole lot of videos, both other musical artists, but also other fun videos, and, and nothing really connected to me until Angelina started to sing. And that was something I've never experienced before, that kind of connection. So that is really what I feel is the most striking feature of listening to, to Angelina, is, is the connection that I feel I think somebody said it's like she's singing directly to you. And I think that's quite a difficult thing to do because singing is in itself a little bit of a disconnect. This is why I don't like musicals because 
I want to be connected to a story and, and when everybody breaks out singing, I think it's like I'm being left out in some way. But when Angelina sings, it's really like going in to my, my sort of being. I guess that's why they call her a great storyteller. Pontus, uh, you had, in one of your podcasts early on, you had said how proud she made you feel when you heard her sing. And I think if I could do what Angelina does, I'd be very proud of myself. I can't do it, but she can. And I'm proud of her, but I'm proud of everyone. It's, it just makes me feel good about humanity when it can produce somebody like Angelina. That's the way I feel. The very first introduction I had was I put a spell on you. And I just really like that song and its variations. And I had heard a lot of variations of it. But when I heard her and she's a 10 year old girl singing, and it's like she sang in a way that I think Jay Hawkins would have said, damn, that's good. Because she captured the whole spirit of it in her own way. And I was just proud of her. And I was proud of humanity. That's a connection. And I don't think everybody has that same experience. Like, they haven't, they haven't heard Jay Hawkins sing it. And they haven't heard several other versions of it. And same with Bohemian Rhapsody, which is the second song. I had heard Queen sing it. And I'm going, man, this is really good. But having said that, I've heard Angelina sing things in other languages I don't know a single word of. And I'm crying. And so it's not just about the words. It's about the feeling that she creates. That's right. It's not, it's not only about the words. It's the sound that she makes, yeah. Uh, why I'm so jealous of uh, Ludger and other amazing artists. You have this uh, gift that's very easy to display and have other people appreciate. And I can be great at my work, but I can't show it to anybody. But uh, musicality is tangible in some way. I think, Pontus, when you use the word connection, I think that's a great, great word because it's not only how Angelina Jordan helps us connect within ourselves and we connect to her. But also as an extension, we see how connected she is within herself. And also as an extension, she connects us with her family and her world. And really at the end of the day, life is about being connected. I mean, not only connected to your inner emotional world, but being connected to everyone and everything around you. And if we don't understand that, we don't understand that at our cost. Children understand this better than adults do sometimes. And, you know, life is about connection. Life is about contact with other human beings. We have been using the word genius in this podcast, but... We have an expression in English, emotional intelligence, but we don't have the expression emotional genius. And I think that is something which could be applicable to Angelina Jordan because what she communicates emotionally through her art is something which almost redefines terms. And so for us to um, think of emotional intelligence as one thing, but emotional genius, I think, is a better way of describing the nature of Angelina Jordan's art. Alan, I think you're onto something there. I think that's right. And I think she does it through an understanding of sound in a way that the rest of us haven't captured. And and I suspect she has an incredible ability to organize in her own mind the different sounds and then choose which sounds to make when. And she does it so effortlessly. I don't suggest that it's a conscious kind of thing. I think it's truly artistic. You like to call it the jazz improvisation. <laughs> but I think that she's drawing from an incredible memory bank that she developed probably while she was still in the womb. I think... She came out of the box really ready and able and then was nurtured from the very early age. And I think she has this incredible mind, really, to do this. We're going to kind of segue into why she's a genius. I think that's a lot of it, is that she had a lot of innate ability from a very early age. And she was exposed to just these legends who were singing. And if you think of the history of mankind, it's only in the last few hundred years, actually, since when we could record earlier sound recordings, that somebody could truly learn all these different sounds and how they make you feel. And I think innately how she gets them to understand that feeling, that's a mystery. 
I don't think we can study all we want about how she affects us. How did she come up with this and how does she keep doing it? That I think is going to be really interesting for us to explore and for future generations to explore because I think she's that good. There's one word in the English language, which I think is very applicable to Angelina Jordan, which is not used very much. And that is the word grace. There is the grace of God, meaning that she has a gift from God. And there is the grace of a ballerina in terms of the smoothness of movement. But also there is giving grace, which is kindness and benevolence, which is also very much part of her being. And that is something that she captures in her music. And that is something she communicates. And I think that is something really, really special. And that is where it gets to the point where this cannot be defined. Actually, Ellen, I've never heard you say that or anybody else about grace. But boy, is that resonating with me. Yeah, I if I had to pick a word for her, that I hadn't thought of before. Boy, that's a great adjective for everything. And just explaining her grace and how gracious she is in terms of her gifts and her sharing them with us and her family, just allowing that. Yeah, I'm grateful. She's gracious in bestowing her gifts upon us. It sounds like she's a saint in terms of the way I'm thinking about it, but but no, I don't think it's going too far to say that it's about grace. I think that's what I was trying to capture when I said when I'm listening to her, no matter what she's singing, there's an inherent underlying grace to it. Yeah, that's a, I think you got something there. Thank you for that. If, if genius comes in many forms, so too does grace. Grace comes in many forms. Grace also, I think. And when she's singing these songs that are tragic, in one of your last videos, you were talking about her tributes and understanding death. You know, have grace, you have to understand the entire spectrum of what it means to be human and then accepting it and accepting things can change and, and some things you can't and accepting what you can and can't do. And I think in her way, she's trying to make the world a better place. Yeah. I just love it. I just love that expression. One thing I was thinking about before we got together here today was being a child is sort of like an open book or something. Children up to a certain age, they are so open and so receptible to things and they learn very fast and there are pretty much small miracles walking around. And maybe there's something there because we're talking about Angelina being a prodigy. And I think all children have that kind of capacity within. And it's just a matter of different settings around them being right to bring that out, I think. Uh, and you were mentioning, Bart, that you thought that she even in the womb got everything right in a way. And there are a lot of things that need to come together to make up that kind of basis for somebody to be this genius. And I think a, a lot of those things are just pure luck. Some of them are inherited, but a lot of things need to be right. It's not just that Janina has that quality in her voice in itself. I mean, that's almost like a physical feature. She also needs to have the brain, the emotional state to be able to come out with these incredible songs and interpretations. So a lot of things need to be just right. If I may go scientific on you <laughs> for a moment, just uh, the fact that we are all here as human beings. Isn't that uh, true, Adrian? That is just uh, almost like a miracle because everything needs to be just right. That is true. There is a great sort of exploration of constantly exploring what is possible. It's a miracle that life has been created as it is. The one word we haven't mentioned, the P word, is potential. So if you look at a chemical, you never realize that the potential of what that chemical is capable of doing. But that word also is applicable 
to looking at a baby. If you look at a one-year-old baby, that baby is 90% potential. If you look at a 10-year-old child, that child is 50% potential. Unfortunately, children and adults, as they grow up, the potential is squandered. The potential is wasted. Whereas Angelina Jordan has realized a very, very high percentage of her potential. And that is part of what is extraordinary about her a perfect combination of things which have come together. So she is able to realize so much of her potential in a way that we're just not used to. Yeah, and I think also that kind of potential that she has is what inspires us to reach more of our potential. Uh, come back in two months and you can listen to uh, how I sing. It will be amazing, I think. <laughs> Maybe in two months, the five of us should do another session together and we can discuss Pontus's singing and we can discuss <laughs> new videos that Angelina has produced and we can do a, a podcast on all the wonderful comments that this podcast will get. Thank you, gentlemen. I think we have the potential we five for meeting again, as we say in Macbeth. Yeah, this is so nice. This is like a new world for most of us, uh, the world of uh, internet and YouTube communities. And that's also a lovely thing that has happened with the Angelina community, that people are actually so kind to each other. And I think that's a great deal to do with how she is as a person, yeah. that she wants us to be in that way and pushes us to be a better self uh, and so nice to, to get those kind of connections all over the globe to speak with and get this kind of input. The lyrics from Million Miles where she sings, you know you're never alone. This is what we are trying to say to other angels, to other Angelina Jordan fans. What you feel is not pathological. There are thousands and thousands of people all around the world. You are not alone in how you feel. And I think that's very necessary to communicate. Yeah. Yes, and it's very nice also to see so many people commenting and that people, they, they feel this connection as well. And that's really very good. Yeah, that, I actually enjoy reading the comments because they're so good hearted and it's so refreshing to see the internet used in a positive way like that. I always feel good about that too. That's a part of the whole process for me, but yes. I'm very hopeful that our world will use this incredible technology we have in a very positive way, because I think the world desperately needs it. I mean, one of the definitions of, of grace is uninterrupted kindness. You can't buy that in the shop and it doesn't come in a bottle, but it comes from the heart. You just have to find which part of your heart. That's true. Yeah. Okay, lads, I'm out of here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Before we all hang up, let's say uh, bye bye, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>